Hi everyone, my name is John Lockley and today I'm going to be talking to you about animal communication. So I'm just going to be waiting for a few more people to, to sign on and oh, there we are. It's nice to see you guys. I saw some of you at my last 11 day shamanism and meditation challenge so it's good to see you. Let's have a few hearts there so I can see you joining. Oh, that's great, thank you. So we'll start off with a bit of a meditation and meditation is the chance just to focus our minds and hearts into the world of the animals and also to wait for a few more people to join us. I'm just going to adjust my camera slightly. There you go. And here we go. A little meditation just to set ourselves up for this online meditation on animal communication. some old faces, some old names, some people I've met before, so it's good to see you. I see Harriet. Hi Harriet. I see you Stenka. Nice to see you Stenka. So today um, I'd like to speak to you about animal communication. It's something very close to my heart and the focus of today's talk is going to be about helping people connect to the animal world. And I've lit a candle here, and the focus of the candle is to spread some light to the animal world and animal kingdom. Because, as most of you know, there is terrible things happening in the animal world right now, where there's species are going extinct all the time. Every single day, new species are going extinct. Old species are going extinct. And we have such a vital role to play as human beings. And in order for us to stop this species extinction, we have to learn the language of the animal world. Learn the language of the animal world. So the first thing is, how do animals communicate? Do they communicate in English, in Cosa, in French, in Italian? Maybe they communicate in Spanish. No. Animals don't communicate in the languages that we know as human beings. They communicate in the language of movement, in the language of sound, in the language of smell, of intuition. And in order for us to learn how to speak to the animal world, we have to learn their language. So for some of you who've done my, my last online course, which was the 11 days shamanism and meditation challenge i was talking about the heart and connecting with the heartbeat and i'm going to carry on with that today because one of the quickest ways to connect with the animal kingdom is to actually connect with your own heartbeat so each of us have a direct connection with nature through our own heart pulse and as we connect with our own heart pulse then we start to communicate or we start to feel the language of the wild ones, the language of animals. So the first rule of tracking, if you're going through the African bushveld and you're tracking animals, the first thing you have to do is you have to connect with your, with your physical body and you have to feel your own heartbeat. That's the first rule of tracking. Before you even look, at the spoor or the tracks in the sand, 
you must connect with your own heartbeat. And uh, I have a story to talk about or to, to share with you about that. I was, I was in a particular game reserve in South Africa and I approached one of the game rangers I'd become friends with and I asked him to show me some lion. And, and he said, sure. And so we went off walking to the bush and he said to me, it's a great time to look for lion because it's, it's the middle of the day and the lions are sleeping underneath the trees. So it's a great time, you know. And then he said, and I'm so pleased I'm going with you, John, because the tourists from America are coming and I don't have my, my gun yet. My rifle is still being repaired, but I'm sure you and I will be okay. <laughs> and I'm dying to go for a walk in the bushveld. So there the two of us went walking in the bushveld and we had a wonderful time together and we were chatting away, chatting away. And then eventually I said to him, please, I hear something. There's a big antelope behind that bush. And he says, no, there isn't, because I'm looking at the spoor, the tracks in the sand, and I can't see any spoor. And then we had this little argument. I said, yes, there is. And he said, no, there isn't. Yes, there is. <laughs> and eventually the whole tree shook, and this big kudu, this big antelope went, wah, jumping over the, over the bush, over the tree. And he was like, wow, that's not bad, John. You know, I didn't know you had these kind of skills. And then the next thing we carried on walking through the bush, through the bush, and then again, I said to him, Shh, there's a big, there's another antelope behind that bush over there. And he said, no, no, there isn't. I'm looking in the sand here and I can't see any spoor and I can't smell anything. And then again, the whole tree shook. And then it was a chemist book, went jumping over that bush. And he looked at me and he said, John, how, how, how do you do it? Like I'm trained with signs, with tracks in the sand. And I couldn't see any tracks. And I said to him, I could feel the, the antelope, I could feel the kudu, I could feel its heartbeat. <laughs> now, my friends, this, this is not a mystery. You and me, we can all feel the natural world. The only thing we have to do is make a decision to tune into the natural world. And the first way we do that is we tune into our own heart pulse. So our own heart pulse is sometimes it's the easiest thing to tune into. And for some people, it's the hardest thing to tune into. So what I recommend is that you just put your hand on your heart and you breathe into that heart space. And just feel the pulse. Feel the pulse, breathe into it, and breathe out. And let that whole pulse in your body focus on that, that pulse inside your own body. Breathe into it, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and just keep focusing on it, and it will start to magnify. And as we did in the last challenge or last uh, Facebook Live, I said you can shake your body up so you're stimulating your spine, and then bring your hands together and just clench your hands, breathing in and out quickly. And then you can feel the pulse in your hands. And then relax your hands and you can feel the pulse. And then go back, you can put a blanket around yourself, cover your body, feel your pulse, breathe in and out into your pulse and allow your pulse to get stronger. That's the first rule in tracking, the first rule in going and following animals through the bush belt or through the forest. Now, why is this important? It's important because we have to learn the language of the animal world. Why? Because the animals are dying and we are custodians as human beings. We are custodians of this world. So our job is to learn the language of the wild ones so that we can hear them and then help them. Then the next thing is dreams. So before I tell you the dreams, I can just share with you, I was in the Kalahari Desert um, leading retreats last year in Botswana. And for six weeks, we tracked this beautiful pride of lions. They were white lions, they had almost pure white uh, coats, but we didn't see them until the sixth week. Up until then, we just followed their tracks in the sand. 
and we put our hands over, over the tracks in the sand. We closed our eyes. I felt my heart beat and then I got a vision in my mind of the line. And then we carried on following the tracks in the sand. And for six weeks we did this until eventually we saw the lion. We saw seven of them. It was the most incredible experience. But I started to dream about the lions after that experience when I went back to Johannesburg. And I had this very strong dream where this lion was following me. And then the next day I had a chat with my tracker friend from Botswana was trained by the Bushman people and he was with me in the Kalahari and he said I've been dreaming about the same about the same lion and he told me the story of the lion and what the lion was saying to him and then I shared with him what the lion was saying to me and they were both the same message and the message was a long message so I'm not going to share it all with you but basically as human beings, we can do something to stop the poaching. We can do something to spread awareness of how the animals are being hunted indiscriminately. But what does this mean for each one of us? Say you're not living close to the wilderness. Say you're living in London or you're living in, in, in Tokyo or you're living in New York City and you're living in a block of flats. Say you absolutely love animals and you want to learn how to start tracking and how to start following the animals all the way into your dreams. How do you do it? Well, I'm giving you the first lesson now. You follow your heartbeat and you tune into the animal that way. And the next thing, when you're having a cup of tea on your balcony, watch the wild ones around you. Maybe those wild ones are cats, stray cats. Maybe they are pigeons. Maybe when you go to the New York underground, you will see rats. I saw the biggest rats, the biggest wildlife I saw when I was in New York was actually the rats in the underground. And they taught me a lot. Those rats taught me so much. They were fearless and they were survivors. And our job is to learn from them. And how do you do that? You feel your own heart and you watch the animal with respect and then you take it from there. I'm going to be doing more of these, these, this animal communication work this weekend at my Earth Ancestors and Dreams online workshop with the College of Psychic Studies. So if you want to know more, then I'm going to put a link after this Facebook Live and you can join me for this intensive weekend workshop on animal communication but on connecting with your ancestors, connecting with your bones, with your heartbeats, with your dreams. And that is what takes us directly into the animal world. But please know this, it takes strong intention, mindfulness, and a courageous heart. The knowledge is not just given to you, you have to earn it. How do you earn it? Listen to your own heartbeat, listen to the wisdom inside of you. So human beings for centuries have been connected to the animal and plant world. And now because of a number of reasons, because of consumerism, because of, you could say, a very high tech, fast modern world, people are starting to lose that natural intuitive connection to the animal and plant worlds. But, here's the but, the good news is it can be reawoken inside of you. And this is part of my work, to help people wake up to their natural connection with the animal world, how to communicate with the animal world. So what I can leave with you is another, another um, tip in terms of connecting with animals, and that is, if you're watching animals, let's say you're watching a herd of antelope, or in my case in South Africa was a herd of, of elephant. What's very good is actually to bring an image into your mind, something that you want to share with them. So maybe it's something very beautiful. And you just put that image into your mind and offer it to them. Because animals work with mental telepathy, especially elephants. 
I remember my mother um, telling me a story about looking at a herd of elephants and she was watching them for hours. Then she said to me, she was so engrossed with watching them that she thought to herself, wouldn't it be very funny if one of the elephants pulled like a whole lot of water into its trunk and squirted it into the face of one of the little antelope next to it? Because she said that would be a sign that the animals actually have a sense of humor. <laughs> so my mother is Irish. She's from Dublin and she has a great sense of humor. So she was just, you know, the heat of the sun was with her and she thought this would be a very, very funny thing. And she brought this into her mind and the next thing, after a few seconds, she saw this elephant pull up all this water into its trunk and then turn and <laughs> squirt this, this, um, this antelope next to her. I, think, I mean, next to the, the elephant, I think it was a Dako or some small buck. And, and she roared with laughter. She thought it was the funniest thing because the buck... Little Dacre got such a fright, it ran off, but it wasn't hurt. It was just a, it was like a, it was a humorous thing. It was funny, you know. So with humor, we get to see the intelligence of the natural world, how it's not just about fight or flight. It's not just about survival. There's something else linking the animals together. And when you see animals being humorous together and playing together, it's, it's very, very beautiful. So I'm going to play my drum with you. And while I'm playing my drum, um, I just want to ask you if you can connect with your own heartbeat, please. And then if we can just send some healing energy into the animal kingdom and just take a pause for all those animals right now who are being poached, who are being shot, who are being killed um, all around the world. And in, in my experience, it's, it's in Southern Africa. And there's many stories to tell about that, but it's quite, uh, it's quite sad and it's quite heart-wrenching. But we can, as human beings, make a difference. And if the only thing you can do right now is send some healing thoughts and prayers, let's do that together, okay? So the first thing with our practice together, the first thing is we are not just doing this for ourselves. We are practicing to help another creature. And in this case, we are practicing to lift the energy up, feel it in our hearts and in our electrical body, and then direct it to the animal world. So I'm going to be directing it to those lions that I saw who are being poached right now. And it's terrible and it's unjust. And the lions don't have a voice. The animals don't have a voice. We do. Human beings have a voice. So as I play the drum, I'm going to send healing energy to those lions. And with you, I call on you to send healing energy to animals that you know are struggling. Just sending it to them as the drum beat lifts. I've got my candle lit here. I'm going to light the incense. So this is a guided meditation, so connecting with your heart, connecting with your spine, connecting with your breath. Sending some beauty and some light into the animal kingdom. And I pray that we can learn the language of the wild ones. I pray that we as humans can learn the language of the animal world so that we can be custodians of this earth and help the animal and plant worlds. Okay, so sitting up, here we go, sitting up straight, here we go. Here we go.
powerful, wakes you, keeps you awake for nights. Know that you have the same power, except stronger. Sangoma, I bring you the voice of Africa, I bring you the voice of the wild ones where I was trained, I bring that to you and I pray that you can do something with that. First feel your own pain, feel your own heart, feel your humanity. Nature is calling all of us right now. Can you hear her song? Nature is calling all of us right now. Can you hear her song? Bring to mind the animal that you or animals that you want to send some healing lights to and just keep that focus. So I thank you all for joining me. There's so much more to be said, there's so much more to share with you. And uh, if you join me this weekend, then we'll have an opportunity to be together. And then I can give you more stories and more ways of connecting with the animal world. Just to give you a short sum up, the first is we listen to our heartbeat. The next is we feel our bones. The next is we connect with our ancestors. And then we listen to our dreams. And our dreams are guiding us back into the animal world. And I will be talking about this this weekend on my weekend of Earth Ancestors and Dreams. And I'll be showing you how to track your dreams, how to track your dreams, and also how to track your ancestors, your bones. So it starts first with your pulse. Tracking starts first with tracking your own pulse, your own humanity, your own electricity. And then we carry on into the dream time seeing what dreams are coming and how to navigate those dreams and how to navigate our connection with the animal world. So I look forward to seeing some of you there. You're all welcome. I'll be sending a link in the bottom of this, um, of this recording. And it's nice to see some of you with me again. And I wish you a great day. Hopefully see you on the weekend. And nice to see you. So thanks very much, everyone. Bye now.